you uh, want to talk, all you have to do is press down the space bar, unmute yourself, and hold it down. And then if you let go, it mutes your mute you back. Uh, again, this is the last Lunch and Learn of the 2019-2020 year. So I want to thank, you know, first and foremost, Rich Story for getting this thing operational for us and for Valerie sending out the, the weekly invites and making sure we're, uh, everything's in order for our Thursdays and just to all the speakers who have come and, and um, given us some great uh, informational sessions uh, as we find ways to connect while we are in this COVID world in the moment. So, and then uh, thanks again to Rich and also thanks to everyone who comes, uh, who has come or who comes every week to be a part of this. It's really good to see faces and uh, share some Rotary Fellowship. So this week, uh, we are ending things with none other than our upcoming governor, Mr. Harry Henderson. A little round of applause from everybody. Um, and thought it'd be good to, to once again hear from him as uh, the sand the hourglass is almost at the end here. So uh, I know he's um, prepared to, to uh, step forward in just a few days, really. So I wanted to hear from him as we get ready to begin the new year. So with that, I'll turn things over to District Governor-elect Harry Henderson. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Um, very kind of you and very kind words uh, that you said on that. Uh, it is getting close now. It's about 13 days away and uh, I'm starting, to, you start to think about that that way to start to say, well, okay, how much gas do I have in the car that I can get away from this as quickly as I can? <laughs> but about getting ready, getting uh, to this. One of the best parts about as you move up to um, uh, in Rotary is when you become a Rotarian, you see Rotary within the four walls of your club. And you start to realize that, okay, you like and you enjoy the, the individuals that are there um, and involved with it. Uh, but then once you become president, you start to realize that it's beyond those four walls, that there's a, a larger um, family of Rotary within your community and in your district. And then once you become move further up into the district and you become district governor, you start to realize that there is a much broader um, uh, family of Rotary that exists uh, across states and countries. But one of the things that I've had the great pleasure with and one of the great fortunes with is uh, the relationship that I've had with uh, Governor Jonathan uh, over these last couple of years. Um, the Henderson and Lucas families have become very close. Um, we've taken the kids to see Santa together. We've uh, spent a lot of time together on various things and um, one of the best parts about Rotary is the friendship and camaraderie that you make in all of this. You know, we have um, Pat Borowski and I joined Rotary about three or four months apart. Uh, we both went through orientation together. I was president and she was my president elect. And so um, I'm, I'm excited to be going through this process with Pat. I've uh, been excited to go through it with uh, Jonathan and been excited to go through it now with, with Sheila as well. And uh, we have a great lineup and a great team of individuals uh, that are coming on to this. And I want to make sure that I, I mention that. There is another person on this call that I did want to point out, and that's uh, Debbie Jackson uh, that's here. Debbie, as I like to say, has been the best teacher I could have had in, um, in Rotary. She's been fantastic. Great sounding board for me on a lot of things. And um, she told me early on whenever I said, in Rotary, we need to have a trainer for our um, district. And she said, I'll be happy to do it as long as uh, I'm not referred to as the district trainer. I am the leadership development chair for our, um, for our district. And she has done that quite well, in my opinion. Uh, our pets this year has been tremendous uh, success. And a lot of that had to do with uh, Debbie and uh, her efforts that were there. 
Uh, and finally, um, my governor, and I know Jonathan's governor, whenever we were both presidents together, it was Rich Story. And Rich taught us to light up rotary. Uh, we both went through pets together with Rich. And I can tell you that um, uh, both Jonathan and I learned a lot from uh, Rich uh, during our time as presidents. And we hope that, um, I know Jonathan has done him proud and I hope that I, I can do him proud as well. Uh, Thank you. With that being said, uh, I'd like to kind of go over with you a um, uh, PowerPoint that we have uh, that I've developed for this. Um, they say in Washington, the most dangerous place to be is between a politician and a microphone. <laughs> Uh, with that, I hope everyone's comfortable. Uh, we got a little bit of a presentation and I, I hope this outlines for you what we have. And with that, I'm gonna work on sharing my screen with you. And hopefully this works. Am I sharing the screen? If I can get a thumbs up from Rich, if that's working. Okay. Um. Uh, Again, uh, I'm your district governor-elect. Uh, this picture was taken in San Diego with our um, uh, president-elect of Rotary International, uh, Holger Nock and his wonderful wife, um, and uh, everyone that goes through uh, our uh, uh, training does go through this effort. Um, I am not, and my wife and daughter and I are not your typical Rotary family. We are, um, she works, I work. We have a daughter that is in, um, uh, in a school still. And we are, like I said, not your traditional typical family. Um, some people have asked me about the middle picture there. That was taken in 1996, whenever I took Katie to uh, an inaugural ball uh, at the um, uh, Marriott in, um, uh, near uh, uh, Wardman Park. So um, just so everyone understands, my priorities are very clear. My faith, my family, my friends come first. Um, one of my heroes in Rotary is uh, our current president, Mark Maloney. Uh, at PETS last year, he uttered this uh, phrase, which is Rotary is not supposed to interfere with your personal and professional life, it's supposed to complement it. And I believe that, and I believe that firmly. Jonathan has lived that this year, and I was immensely impressed by how he did that. And I want to tell everyone that that is how we plan to do things in the coming year, is that faith, family, and friends come first. A little bit about me, for those of you that don't know me or don't know a whole lot about me. Um, I am from Greensburg, Pennsylvania originally. It's a suburb of Pittsburgh. It is, and I'm actually from a community called West Point that is about, I would say 30 minutes uh, south of Greensburg. Uh, Greensburg is a Rockwellian kind of town. Um, it had a main street with a Murphy's Five and Dime, a Joe Workman's, uh, an Isley's uh, 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 soda fountain. Uh, it was really, truly small town Americana is where I was from. Um, my yearbook photo from 1991. There are some people that like to think that I look like Brad Pitt uh, in my yearbook. I, I don't see it there. Um, Bill Bailey likes to always say, would tell me, uh, is it the truth? Well, it sure is beneficial. So um, uh, that, uh, that picture... You know, I, I, you know, the camera catches my good side usually is uh, the way that I, I kind of look at it. I had planned to go to play football at uh, Stanford coming out of high school. Uh, I was a offensive guard uh, and played uh, the position pretty well. I've been recruited by Stanford, been offered a scholarship. I was going to go play at Stanford mainly because it was three thousand miles away from my mother, um, but. Unfortunately, between my junior and senior year of high school, I broke both my knees playing uh, baseball to stay in shape. And so my football career came to an end, and I turned to my other passion, which was politics. I went to the George Washington University, uh, where I graduated 
with a number of different degrees. I have a master's degree in public administration. I have a, um, uh, I have a uh, um, master's in a couple of other studies, including women's studies. Um, more on that if you get some alcohol in me. Um, but after college, I went to work uh, on Capitol Hill. And I went to work for one member of Congress uh, during my entire time, which is a little bit different from uh, the, uh, the normal approach that is in Washington. Um, I really enjoyed working for the member that I did. I started as his receptionist. I was making $15,500 annually in 1994. Um, just so that you understand that did qualify me for food stamps. Uh, I spent eight years with the congressman. I held seven different titles, um, including my last was deputy chief of staff. And uh, I was the uh, legislative counsel for him on the House Armed Services Committee and his liaison between the House Armed Services Committee and the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Um, the congressman had in his district uh, the aerospace uh, valley, as we called it, the Antelope Valley of uh, Plant 42, Edwards Air Force Base, China Lake, uh, Fort Irwin, Nellis uh, Range, um, did a lot of work on aerospace issues uh, when I worked with them. Uh, after 9-11, I left Capitol Hill. My theory was that if I was going to uh, be killed for my political beliefs and for believing in America, that I probably uh, should go make a little bit of money in the process. I went to work for a K Street firm. I uh, did that for about 18 months. And the individual that was the owner of that firm was a tremendous business individual, but he was a terrible human being, absolutely terrible, unethical, someone that I just could not respect. It did spur in me a, an entrepreneurial spirit, which I have carried on. Um, I like to say I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, which probably means that I don't have a tremendous attention span. Uh, hey, there's a squirrel in the yard. Uh, anyway, um, so I started uh, Anchor Consulting uh, as a government relations and lobbying firm. We represent really terrible groups like community colleges, water agencies, uh, municipalities, uh, groups that are trying to essentially get assistance from the federal government in a variety of ways. I'm a partner in a state uh, consulting and public image firm. Um, I started a transportation and warehouse business called JKH Logistics, which stands for Jackie, Katie, and Harry uh, Logistics. This was born really out of my tremendous fear of flying that I have. And since I was driving to most of my meetings, I simply started taking items into the back of my vehicle to help offset costs. I'm a partner in Bossert Henderson Media, which is a brand and media company. We own an e-commerce online sales company. And probably next year, I will have a second uh, state consulting and um, uh, campaign consulting business that I will be a part of at that point. Uh, I got married to Katie in uh, 2004. I met her in 1993 in August on the fourth floor of the Marvin Center at George Washington University. She sat behind me wearing a Delta Gamma sweatshirt in a CPR class. For me, it was love at first sight. For her, it took her about another, um, uh, another 10 years or so to figure out that it was for her as well. Um, we like to say we either got married on the 10th or the 11th of November. Uh, that's because the um, marriage certificate says November 11th, but the actual ceremony was on the 10th. So either we were married, uh, either I have two days to get my anniversary right, or I actually have to celebrate two different days uh, for my anniversary, which isn't always great. It was originally planned for Key West, but Hurricane Wilma kind of altered that plan. We only have the one daughter, Jackie. Uh, she is daddy's little girl. Uh, she will always be this size, no matter what, in my opinion. Um, she has a very rare genetic uh, disorder called Williams Syndrome Plus, 
Williams syndrome affects about 20 to 30,000 people in the United States. Uh, it is a deletion of genetic material from chromosome seven. Jackie is 12, but functions probably at the level of a 14 to 16 month old uh, child. She doesn't walk, she doesn't talk, she has significant developmental delays and intellectual disabilities. The biggest challenge that we have with her diagnosis is that she has epilepsy. And as I told the presidents at uh, President Alexa at PETS, uh, if I don't end up coming to a meeting or to an event that you have asked me to come to, uh, it, it's nothing personal. It's probably more to do with the fact that I just we have certain challenges and certain issues that we're going to have that we have to address with Jackie as a special needs child. A couple quick fun facts about me. Um, my favorite bands are the Rolling Stones and Pink Floyd. I don't think there's been a good piece of music made after 1994. Um, uh, I do happen to like uh, probably a more uh, modern sense of music than some of my uh, colleagues. Um, I think uh, Governor Jonathan and I had plans before COVID sucked the fun out of all of this uh, to go see uh, Motley Crue. Uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, summer at uh, Nationals Park. But that really didn't end up happening. Um, I can tell you storylines that would involve someone mining for gold, hillbillies making uh, moonshine, or anyone fishing for that matter. That's really not my proudest moment to be able to do that on. My favorite food is hot dogs with sauerkraut. It needs to be warm. None of this crap you get out of the jar and put out cold. You know, Heathens eat that stuff, not me. So, um, and I am a way better golfer than both Dave Borowski and Joe Luquire. Way better than Dave Borowski. Um, real quick on uh, some themes. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Jonathan Lucas outlined five enduring points of light this year. That's his theme. That is the same theme that I am going with this year. It is critically important in what we do. We need to engage. We need to be consistent. We need to have transparency. Diversity and inclusion has to be a key part of what we do. We have to be visible in our local community and we have to be innovative. I would like to see Rotary empowering our local communities to be more engaging and sufficient uh, to be able to respond to some of these challenges and to have Rotary as a key part to that. My expectations, and I have told this to every individual that works at the district office and at the district uh, that is holding a dis district office position. I expect people to respect the organization and its people. Rotary has not always been a shining example of the right and wrong way to do things. We have some history that is not exactly exemplary when it comes to issues of access for women and others. However, we as an organization have made great strides and I have great respect for the organization as a whole. And we are working very hard to make sure that that organization continues to grow and to be involved. I expect uh, people to respect the process and I expect people to respect our product as service. Not everyone agrees that polio is the, um, is the thing that should be our priority, but it is what we're working on and I expect people to, uh, to be involved and engaged on those issues. Goals, memberships are top priority period. There is no but at the end of that. Steve Cook used to always like to say, Rory likes to say that membership's the top priority and then they add, but we also want you to work on X or we want you to work on Y. And as I told the president elect at PETS this year, I have enough but for everybody here. Membership is our top priority, period. End of discussion. I am a very proud Paul Harris Society member. Our foundation is absolutely the main reason 
that people are able to do the great work that we do. That foundation drives our success. And I am so proud of the great work that we, we work on with that. We have to work on our uh, public image and our brand. Rotarians know what Rotary and our Rotary clubs are about. One of the things that Holger Nock would like us to work on is he would like us to work on having each club have a strategic meeting during the year. And I would only add to that that as part of that strategic meeting, I would like our clubs to survey and poll our local community leaders to identify what they believe Rotary and Rotary International is so that we know what others are doing and what others believe we are. For far too long, youth has not been uh, a central part of what we've worked on. It has been a time commitment and a service project. I believe that our youth programs create the platform for future Rotarians to be involved. Uh, Jim Holcomb is going into our youth service uh, program and he is moving it in a direction that I am very pleased with. And that is to make it as a portion of how we obtain members for our clubs. And I think that's, an, that's a key part of what we do. Rotary has taken a great step with uh, elevating Rotaract, and that's a terrific step. I want our clubs to make a similar commitment uh, to utilize their youth service programs as a membership tool for uh, engagement with their local community. We did this very effectively at Bailey's, and I would tell you that I think that we need to continue to work on those efforts. Diversity and inclusion is absolutely critical. With few exceptions, our clubs do not look like the communities they reside within, particularly here in Northern Virginia. And we need to change that. And that's a key issue that I want us to work on in the coming year. Finally, technology has to be our friend. We have to look at technology as a driver moving forward. I want to spend a minute or two on a membership campaign that we're working on uh, across the zones and that you'll probably hear more from uh, as our membership chair, Jonathan Lucas, will uh, take this on uh, as we move forward. I would like our clubs to take up a mantra of not one member lost. Over the last decade, Rotary set a record for more members being added to Rotary International than has ever been added in the past. We also set a record for the number of members that were lost in that same time period. It's not a, it's not brain surgery to say, if we can limit our attrition, we're going to grow Rotary in a significant way. One of the reasons that as president of my club, I was successful was we didn't lose members. We literally made it a premium to keep members involved. And so we need to get into the right mindset. And that mindset is throughout this crisis, not one member is going to be lost. We are going to do everything we can to develop solutions based on Rotary as a membership organization. And we're going to utilize every tool we have to keep members in our clubs. Every member is an essential part of our club. No one is expendable. One thing that drives me nuts, absolutely drives me nuts, is this statement of there are Rotarians and then there are members of Rotary clubs. That's akin to saying that there are Rotary members and those that aren't Rotary enough. And that mindset has to change. Every member is a Rotarian. No one is expendable. When we get ourselves into that mindset that every single member is an essential part of who we are and our club, we start to value those individuals as part of a membership organization. And it's something that we need to, to work on. 
we got to go back to basics, folks. We got to learn and consider why people join Rotary and why they stay. And if we can work through those issues, membership gets resolved. As you all know, and many of you know, I should say, I, I am very passionate about membership and membership issues. And I spent a lot of time working on membership issues in Rotary. And the main reason is because Rotary has done so much for me that I want others to be able to have that same experience. And we need to go back to the basics of why do people join our organization and why do they stay? And as a converse, why are they leaving? And how do we address that? And I know that Jonathan Lucas is going to be working on a lot of that. I talk a bit about diversity and inclusion. We have to make a priority of making our clubs look like the communities that they reside within. That's going to create some very difficult conversations that we have to have within our clubs. That's okay. We need to have those difficult conversations. We need to be able to have some conversations to look around and say, we aren't doing enough to attract members from minority communities within our organization, which is good for us modernizing our organization. We gotta to start to recognize the challenges that the minority communities face whether that's on issues of social justice, whether that's on issues of economic challenges, whether that's education, healthcare, you name it, transportation, health, uh, housing, we have to start to recognize those challenges and stop ignoring them in our communities. We've got to listen to the concerns of those individuals without a lens of ideological prejudice. We gotta stop coming to conversations with preconceived notions of how a solution needs to occur and instead start listening to what those individuals are saying. By the way, those conversations are gonna be difficult and painful at times. That's okay. If we can learn from each other, we can ultimately find solutions. You know, uh, another hero of mine is Jennifer Jones and she, said, I remember at Pets when Rich Story was our governor-elect. She got up and said, Rotary is where leaders come together to exchange ideas, create solutions, and ultimately a better society and a better world. I think we need to have those conversations now more than ever. This is as much about doing the right thing as human beings and as community leaders as it is for us having long-term survival of our clubs, particularly here in urban and suburban communities. Jonathan Lucas deserves a heck of a lot of credit. Heck of a lot of credit. He established the Diversity and Inclusion Committee and Renee Laws has been the chair of that committee and has uh, been fantastic. Felton Page is gonna take that over next year. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. We've developed an open letter to our community about racial relations, where we outlined the values that Rotary is about. And I can tell you, we had a significant number of leaders from the African-American community within our Rotary family that have been involved in it. The response to it has been positive. It has been tremendous. And we have a significant number of individuals, whether they're from community leaders, church leaders, um, organizations, police, uh, government officials that have all said they are interested in coming together uh, to identify solutions. We've developed a forum to first listen and then identify solutions on social justice issues. And in the process, we're also developing additional efforts associated with ethnic and religious injustice. This is not just about racial challenges that we have. This is about ending discrimination and ending efforts associated with it. Why are we doing this? Well, aside from being the right thing and about the survival of our clubs, it fits into Rotary's strategic plan and our priorities and objectives of increasing our impact, expanding our reach, enhancing participant engagement, and increasing our ability to adapt. Diversity and inclusion 
fits into every one of those categories. And it's an important part of who we are. I want to spend a minute or two talking about our theme for the coming year. I don't know that there's ever been a more serendipitous time for a theme to come out of Rotary Opens Opportunities as we have today, given the last four months that our community has gone through this. And I know that our friends from Australia have gone through it a little bit longer than we have. But Rotary is an opportunity that we have a chance to do something great. And it's because Rotary opens those opportunities for us to do something great. Rotarians are the ones that do great things. Rotary provides us with the vehicle to do them in. And that's a tremendous aspect for it. I sat in San Diego and listened to Holger Nock as he presented this, uh, this theme. And he talked about why people join. And I, I want to take a minute and say, you know, here at home, people join Rotary for large accomplishments like trying to solve the opioid crisis. I know that there's a number of Rotarians uh, in our district that have been working on it. Amelia Stansel is doing just tremendous work on trying to end modern day slavery. Uh, Art and Ryan Chankter running Flags for Heroes. I can't tell you the number of people that have come up to me and said how important it was that program allowed them to honor a relative or someone from their community that was engaged into it. Holger Nock talked about this extensively where he said people join clubs for reasons as large as ending polio and as small as planting a tree. And I can tell you that I've become more and more impressed with the man every time he talks on these subjects. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the three doors of uh, the theme. You know, we, we talk about the theme, and I, I don't like to get into too much of a uh, uh, symbolism here, but there are three doors, and I think there are three pathways within Rotary. The first is service. You know, we've all seen this, these sort of issues of that we build schools that we never attend, and we plant trees, we care for children, we end crises that we don't know the participants in, and we provide a hand for those that in need that will never know us personally. It is truly about service above ourself. Here at home, we're working on a lot of these things. You know, the Great Falls and McLean Rotary Club are doing such tremendous work when it comes to issues of opioid uh, dependency challenges. You know, Jonathan Lucas is working on just a tremendous program about face masks and face shields that has uh, been tremendous. There are just countless programs that our clubs and Rotarians are involved in. Um, Michelle Peters is on this call, and I, I just, I get emotional about the work that Michelle does with kids in Africa that, frankly, are just not um, given the support from the local community. And she goes over there to make sure those kids are taken care of. And I'm just so proud of the work that she does. Think of the second door about friendship and fellowships. Some of you may know uh, Bill Kirkpatrick. He passed away a couple of years ago. And he used to say to me all the time, Harry, Rotary is where I have coffee with my friends. And I never really understood that or believed that to be the case. I always thought it, eh, it's got to be something more. But the more I've thought about it, Bill was really on to something. Rotary opens opportunities for friendship. These four gentlemen here in this photo, three, because I don't know if I'm a gentleman or not. Dave, you're on the fence on this one, buddy. Sorry. Uh, but no, we're, uh, we really enjoy spending time together. We golf together. We are known to uh, spend time together. The four of us became incredibly close. Would I have met any of the other three without Rotary? Probably not. Rotary opened that opportunity for me. And each of us has a story like that. Where else could a young lady from the suburbs of Chicago 
a guy from the uh, from Lynchburg, Virginia, and a hillbilly from Western Pennsylvania come together and form an incredible friendship and partnership together. Rotary gave us that opportunity. And I am so incredibly thankful for Rotary for it. Third door, in my opinion, represents a better self. You know, the vision statement of Rotary, we talk about seeing a, a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change. We often forget the last word in ourselves. Jennifer Jones made a comment that we often think about Rotary as bettering others, but we fail to see that Rotary is about making a better citizen of the world, a better parent, a better spouse, a better partner, and a better friend. Rotary does all of those things. When I was president of my club, I learned how to speak in front of a group of Rotarians every week. And so I was able to learn how to talk. John Allen taught me how to do strategic planning. I use that in my business practice extensively. I learned how to work with other individuals, sometimes with individuals that I disagreed with. But I learned how to work with them. And I learned how to make a solution in a community and to help my community to do better things. Rotary's open for business, folks. Notice that those doors are open. They're not closed. We're an inclusive organization. We want leaders and I want leaders. And I don't care what their age is, what gender they are, the race, color, creed. I don't care if you're gay or straight. If you care about your community, I want you to be a part of our organization. And we need you to be a part of our organization to help us be a better place and a better organization. Teddy Roosevelt likes to, there's a great quote about Teddy uh, as the man in the arena. And I'm not gonna talk about it. I have a tremendous amount more respect for people that get up and do things than those that like to criticize him. Barry um, Gordon's on this call. And Barry gets up and does things. And that's why I have a tremendous amount of respect for Barry. And I know that Barry is out there working on things on a daily basis to try and make his community and his club a better place. And I'll stand with him any day of the week. And I certainly would tell Barry, don't worry about the critic. That's not the person that counts. Be the person in the arena. Are you ready to walk through those doors with me to the opportunity that awaits us in Rotary? And with that, that is the end of my presentation and I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Wow, okay. <laughs> hey, Harry, this is Barry. I'll send you the check in the mail. No problem. No problem at all. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for it. There's a lot of zeros on it. Okay. No. <laughs> Harry, this is Eileen from Great Falls. Hello. Hi, Eileen. Um, that was a great presentation, and I got so excited about it. I want you to come and speak to my club. Um, probably September is when we'll be back in weekly format. Can we uh, get you booked early? <laughs> we will. We'll work on that, and um, you know, we're working on on those efforts. We actually have a call today with our legal counsel to talk about um, uh, some actions we may need to take in order to open um, uh, our clubs and to make sure that our clubs are doing so with, uh, with a level of uh, safety and security and liability that is, is appropriate. So I'd be happy to come and work and uh, to meet with you guys.
And can I follow up on, on you just mentioned something. Uh, I'm really torn as to how to manage our installation awards. We have a, the back lawn of a park set for July 9th. And um, given that we're losing the insurance as of July 1st, uh, what are other people thinking? Is this too, uh, too dramatic a move for us? Should we just do it virtually? I, I would tell you that I'd like to tell you that for uh, for us to kind of maybe pump the brakes before I would give you an answer on that. I We have a call this afternoon with our um, legal counsel on it. I would rather make sure I, I have a... Can you share with me when you're finished with yes, that? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that, Eileen. I'll give you a call okay. and share with you on that front. But sure. like I, said, I, I don't want to give you wrong information or information that may change this afternoon. Right. So if, if I can get back to you on it, and I recognize that's an issue and I'd be happy to do that. All right. Thanks. So, so Harry, if those of us who are already planning virtual installations, we can still move forward though, correct? Absolutely. There's nothing that says that you can't do that. Okay. So did hours yesterday virtually. Yeah. Great. So Harry, when you get that information, would you send it out to all the presidents? Yes. We will be sending out uh, something. Uh, uh, the presidents and president elects have been getting emails, I think, regularly from Jonathan and I about some of these issues we mentioned about operations on in the last one that we did, and uh, we'll be happy to continue to share that. Um, Thank you. Mary, this is Grace. Thank you for the lovely I would say, presentation and the pictures. I'm very visual, so I was enjoying it. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm here at the Crystal City Pentagon, and I'm the president-elect. And yes. the work of COVID, how do you feel, or what are your opinions? in our work, especially our international work, how it's gonna be affected due to this pandemic? Uh, great question. Um, we recognize it's gonna be a challenge uh, to do international work. I can tell you that Rotary International has suspended travel mm. for uh, uh, global grants and uh, through the end of the calendar year. And so part of what I would tell you is that I think we need to, um, that we need to basically, to, I need to get a better answer for you on it would probably be the answer, but it's going to be a challenge that we're going to have to deal with uh, in the coming, um, in the coming weeks and coming months, It'll be a challenge. I don't have a great answer for you other than being into it. Thank you. Harry, I just wanted to tell you that was a marvelous presentation. Really covered uh, the whole gamut of things we need to do and look at. I was uh, really impressed. Really nice. Thanks. Bob, can I ask you to continue to help and work with us on issues of um, religious injustice and how we can address those issues in our Sure. Uh, I sent a note uh, to Jonathan about some of my concerns, but certainly want to, uh, I like, I think you answered uh, them in the, the, the last bullet on your chart. And uh, yeah, certainly. Thank you. Yeah, and hey, Jonathan Cass here from Gainesville Haymarket, formerly of Springfield. Phil, nice to see you again. Three quick things, mark your calendar for September 5th. Uh, we opened up our, we, postponed our Flags for Heroes to Labor Day weekend, so 9 a.m. on uh, 5 September, the congressmen and state senators and stuff are already chiming in and saying they're coming. So it should be a, a, quite the display. We're headed for over 150 flags this year, we estimate. So that's it's looking good. On the diversity side, of course, you saw our newsletter input. We did the uh, Peace Remark out here, a peace, uh, peace Walk out here for diversity in the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, Justice Walk. And what they've had for the council, Rotary and our diversity in our club are probably going to get involved in a civil, cival advisory board that the town is going to, the towns are standing up to address these type of issues. And I just lost the third item. I had a third item, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if it pops up in my head, I'll think of it. Thank you. It's behind the third door. Huh? It's behind the third door. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, that was my theme. I had three ideas for three doors, but <laughs> what are you going to do? Renee? I just want to say thank you uh, for what you and Jonathan, Pat, and Sheila have all committed to do. I think that the future of Rotary is heavily involved with the diversity and inclusion piece. And I just appreciate um, that I was able to be involved with the beginning of it. Um, I look forward to continuing on the committee and working within my area next um, for the next three years to, to continue to promote it. But thank you for getting it started because um, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, it's important to everyone in the country. So thank you for your leadership. And Jonathan, thanks for, um, <laughs> for signing me up when I opened my mouth. <laughs> Any other questions for Harry? Not a question for Harry, but a comment for both actually Harry and um, Jonathan. And Jonathan and Harry both know me, several of you others do as well. So you, you know where I'm coming from for, for this. But as I was listening to Harry and I was reflecting on this year uh, under the, some of the principles that, that Jonathan has, has already incorporated that we believe in, but this was more for me personally. So I want to thank you because it was for me. Uh, this is about a culture that we're we are looking at building or rebuilding, an organizational culture that looks at love. And, and to get there, we have to take on some of the most controversial topics oftentimes that there are out there. But I know we can get there if we do it together and we reflect together and we come with the open-mindedness is, is what I heard today. Because I, I got to be honest with you, over these last few weeks, and I shared this with my own board and club, I've heard Rotarians, Rotarians of color, speak of leaving the organization. And, and, and I had to, you know, step, have, pull, have them pull back and say, wait a minute, you know, this is not the time where you, you know, you, you get that mass exodus because there is love here. There is love here and there is that commitment here. But if we all step away, then we, we get nowhere. So that opportunity to reflect together is important. And I sat here and, you know, you can't, Zoom, you can't do anything but clap silently, but I was trying to do my little hot vibes because you know, <laughs> of what I was hearing. So I just want to say thank you to, to both of you gentlemen. I look forward to working alongside of you and your teams to do whatever I can do. I came up in a time of controversies. I came up and grew up on front lines of protest. So this just remind, takes me back and let, reminds me that the work isn't all over yet that we still got a ways to go. And, that, but the, and that's okay. But the opportunities for these kinds of conversations are critical. So let me stop because Harry says something about a politician. I'm a former principal. You never give us a microphone or a platform. <laughs> we'll keep going. So, but I want to thank everyone on this call. For just listen to your comments and listen to Harry and so many others. Um, I'm looking forward to us moving forward together. Um, I'm committed, you know, my tenure as president is coming to an end, so I'll have even more time because um, this whole thing has really been, um, I told a couple of people yesterday, it was overwhelming, the pandemic and everything else, uh, and running a club is overwhelming to keep things well connected. So anyway, thank you guys. Um, I'm sorry I didn't, wasn't able to get in on some of the other lunch and learns. Great, op great idea. It's just that I've been busy. So, uh, but I did say I was going to make it here today because I knew this would have to be the last one. So, thank you, John, wherever you, wherever you are. I can't see you, but I know you're in there somewhere. Um, and Harry as well. I know I'm, I'm seeing people, but not everybody. So, thank you. Thank hey, John, you. John and uh, Harry, I just want to attest to something that Valerie was um, saying there. We, um, as a fact of a fact of matter over the last 30 days, I've dealt with that exact problem with um, African Americans wanting to jump right out the club uh, on, the, on day one of what was going on. And I think through, I, I'll use your three door example through education, communications, 
and just plan having discussions and being more active, uh, active discussions and being uh, challenged to be people of action, turned her around and she didn't leave the club. So we met the goal. We're, we're better, everybody, the, the club is a better club. Everybody in the club respects each other better. And now we have more open communications uh, between each other in this, in this respect. So we're going to test on a success story for the coming year and this year under you, Jonathan, and you, Harry, in the future. Thank you for that comment. And you know, thank Jonathan, you. I just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you on that. Um, just wanted to say the, um, these are going to be difficult conversations we're going to have to have from time to time. And they're going to be painful conversations to have. But that's the only way we're going to be able to grow. If we continue to ignore the problem, we're not ever going to be able to solve it. And we got to have those conversations and we got to listen uh, to those uh, issues that are brought up and then take action. And that's the most important thing that I think I can relay as we work through these challenges uh, that are going on uh, in our society. And it, it, frankly, we have not listened well enough. Uh, and that's, and that's something we've got to address. Harry, if you don't mind, um, just an outside perspective. Firstly, I want to thank you all for inviting us, us Australians in and make us feel really welcome. Uh, thank you to Jonathan for uh, shutting down the trip because you had some, uh, you had some resistance from us because we really wanted to get over there, but I'm super <laughs> glad you did. Um, and finally, I think, I think what you're talking about when it comes to um, opening up the doors to Rotary is a worldwide thing. It's, I mean, I've been to several Rotary clubs here in Australia and Western Australia and, you know, something, something I haven't seen is Indigenous Australians involved. And I think that's a persona that we have within Rotary uh, that it's this prestigious, it's, you know, it's, it's business people. It's, you know, we need to open that up a bit more. And that's something I really want to work on over here as well um, to try and get that involvement. And, you know, I think America has opened the world's eyes, whether it's the right way or the wrong way of going about it. Um, I think it's really opened the world's eyes because we've all been watching. We've all, we've all been seeing what's happening over there. Um, and one way or another, it's opened all our eyes to how we could all be better. Thank you, Joe. Um, look, when I first got out of college, I had a mentor, her name was Isabella Davis. Uh, this was in Greensboro, North Carolina. And she was involved in the original Woolworth sit-ins that took place. Uh, she was a student, a, uh, North Carolina a and University. And she's just an amazing human being. And we would have, the two years I worked alongside her, we would have many chats about her bravery and what she did and why she did it along those other students on that fateful day. And, uh, you know, what I learned is empathy only happens through action. Yes. yes. And that... Uh, we are one race, we are one people, and that uh, love is the most important thing. And you can't get there unless you really have an open mind to step into somebody else's shoes and understand their life. I've had the privilege to live in places like Zimbabwe in mud huts with village in a village, with people who didn't look like me, didn't speak my language necessarily, um, they accept me for who I am. Uh, and I've had that opportunity all over the world. And um, I am married to somebody from China, from a different culture. And uh, that only works if you're willing to um, humble yourself and be open to different way of thinking and, and doing and, and, and learning. Um, we have to grow. There's a book by a guy named David Locke. This is Grow or Die. It's a fundamental book I, I read early on in my first master's program. And it really comes down to this. From a single cell organism to a fish in the sea, to a human being, to an organization, 
if you're unable to adapt your surroundings and grow, you'll never survive. You'll never make it. That's the point of life. And so we have this great opportunity in this moment to really make change and really make ourselves stronger. But it takes all of us to do it. And, uh, and so I thank you for letting me go on this journey with you over the last year. Um, and the conversations aren't easy and people may have different viewpoints and agree agreements on things and that's okay. Cause it's not about dividing us. It's about bringing us together. And, um, we need each and every one of you all to do great things. And we need to make sure this is a hospitable place for everyone who wants to call themselves a Rotarian. So thank you for your time again today. Thank you, Governor Harry Henderson, for your great presentation. And thank you for keeping on, keeping on while we're dealing with the COVID-19 situation. Um, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So we will come out the other side of this even better uh, than we were before. So um, I look forward to the new year and more great things from Rotary 7610. And if this doesn't kill you, drinking with the Australians will. <laughs> <laughs> I love the silent clapping. That was. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, you know, we tried something new yesterday because of the silent clapping, and people couldn't really see who was clapping. We just started doing this. To everybody, and all of a sudden, I saw everybody. Free. So this is to congratulate you, Jonathan, and welcome Harry. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Love it. There's an old expression: we all know the sound of two hands clapping. Do we know the sound of one hand clapping? <coughs> all right. Have a great day, everyone. All right. Bye, guys. I miss you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Got it. I was supposed to leave. <laughs> Good having you with us. I can't tell you how exciting it is that you guys come in or you come in every week and I, it really says a lot. It really does. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to it whenever it might be. <laughs>